Can we go to Zaxby's today? Yep. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today I thought I would do something a little different and give you some of my lip lining tips because I am a lover of lip liner and I've been using lip liner for so long. I can remember when I was little watching my mom put her lip liner on and I have used it, gosh, I know, of course when I was in my 20s, it was the 90s, so you can imagine. <laughs> I remember L'Oreal. The plums and the wines was one of them, and the mauves and the berries, that's the one I wore the most. So, I did this video yesterday, and it did not turn out very well. It was raining outside, and my lighting was off, and I was worried about the shine on my face, so I kept on caking more powder, and you could really see it. Yesterday, I did this with the Bare Minerals Vibe, and the Beauty, for Beauty Professor with Claudette, I always say Claudette, it's Christian Audette, this pink color and it's called L, and then I used a little bit of a Buxom lip gloss that I have in my car, which is Claire, I believe. So, today I thought I would do just a different lip, and I was thinking the other day, you hardly ever see anyone wear just like a baby pink lip anymore. It's always red, dark, peach, like that creamy nude, brown, but you know, we just don't see a lot of pink anymore, and I really like pink sometimes, so I'm going to do it with pink today. So, I have just put on my foundation, and I actually tried Brooks Pixie BB Cream, or Face Tint today, and it's not as much coverage as the e.l.f., so I put on my Laura Mercier Mineral Makeup, just old school, the loose, rich vanilla, and classic beige. And I sprayed it real good, and I don't want to. I don't want to make it powdery. So if I'm a little shiny, that's you know, it'll be better. You know, when I'm out and about, I just don't want it to be cakey today. So anyway, I'm going to use this chapstick, and I think it's important to use a chapstick when you do this, rather than a real goopy gloss or um, anything that's going to get outside of your lip line. You want to keep something that's kind of you know waxy like this, and that way you can put it on, and what I'm going to do is remove that makeup that has been left around my lips. Now, I happen to like that sometimes. I think that makes the lip liner go on a little bit softer, and um, I just don't mind that, And you know, unless my whole lips are just caked with it, but normally they're not. They're just about like that, and it's just my lip line, but in case you don't, I'm going to show you what I do to get rid of it especially if I'm just wearing a gloss, because if you're just wearing a gloss, you don't want any of that to mix in with your gloss. So I'm gonna put on this, which is just Chapstick Sweet Papaya. And I just put a little bit on my lips and then rub it in. Here we go. So go right along your lip line like that. And that way you're keeping your foundation all the way up into your lips. And I just rotate it. Okay. And then on the bottom, I kind of go along my lip line first. Like that. And then I take like the body of the Q-tip And like that. And that leaves just enough, you know, a little bit of slip on your lips so that your lips aren't so dry, but not so much that you can't get lip liner on or something else. And also, when you are <laughs> twirling this around, you're kind of removing a little bit of that excess skin or anything. It makes them really smooth. Today, I'm going to use a Lancome lip liner, which they are my favorite lip liners. And um, I'm gonna use Bronzel, which is, I think, a must-have. I think everyone, everyone needs a Bronzel lip liner. And I'm gonna use my L'Oreal Sharpener, and we're gonna get this sharp. I think, I mean, I could use this, just this sharp, but I really like it when they're really sharp. And of course, the, lip, the little sharpeners that come with lip liners work best for each one. You can see how that one kind of chewed it up a little bit but I don't like having to go over a trash can each time. Okay, so I want you to take notice that this side, this whole side of my mouth, you can see is rounder and fuller than this side. 
this side kind of comes straight up and doesn't round out. So I like to apply my lip liner from the outside in. I think it's easier. It's um, It just gives you more of a routine sweep rather than, you know, kind of going like this, you know, from the Cupid's bow out for me. And um, I find that when I do that, it just makes a prettier curve on my lips and it helps it really helps this side go with this side because if you were just to go along the lip line of this one it would be harder to make them even so what I do is I usually just put my hand right here I don't really pull my lips out I'm just keeping my lips steady because I want to drag this perfectly I don't want any skips or anything and I put my lip liner a little bit on its side so I do like this and if you see that right there that is just discoloration in my lips just pigment, just like they're more pigmented around here. And I'll start at the very end. And go up like that. And I'm not overlining them, but I am going right on that edge of my lips. Okay, and then I put it on this side. Okay. So that is just a light lining. And then for the bottom, I usually just, matter of fact, you don't always have to line the bottom. I think the top lip is more important to line. And so I don't always, but usually I do. You can see how this side of my lip, just like this side, is just more full. So um, I usually just do a little bit right here at the end like this and I kind of swing up like that and that is my typical lip liner technique now I don't but usually go like really into the corners because I can find with me it it does make your mouth look larger if you do that now I've watched several videos like how to get Angelina Jolie lips and all that kind of stuff and it does say to go all the way in, but I don't. Um, I think a lot of it too is because I'm, you know, as you get older, you have more lines and stuff around your mouth and you just want to put the least amount as possible to get the impact. So I don't do that. But if you wanted to, you could, you know, come up a little bit further like that. But that is not my typical. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and put on my lipstick and see if I want any more lip liner. Today, I'm going, I've got jeans and a sweatshirt on, second or third day hair, and I am just getting ready for Thanksgiving and kind of messing around, so I just wanted a casual look today, so I, this will probably be enough, but I'm using one of my favorite light pink lipsticks. I'm going to wipe it off in case I have some other lip liner in it, but it's MAC Cream Cup. I think this is a universal pink lip shade. I think it can go on a redhead, brunette, blonde. I think it's just a good shade. It's not too cool and not warm. And you'll notice I do my lipstick the same way because I think I want to follow that line and it keeps your lips from bunching up like you can see i have plenty of like wrinkles and stuff in my lips and it just makes the application smoother okay and then on the bottom i usually do the same thing as i do with the lip liner i start in the middle and i kind of work back and forth like that and then i go up a little bit and you can see that the lipstick is lighter than the lip liner which in my opinion is the way you want to do it you can blend it in to whatever degree you want to, but that is going to give you dimension. That is going to separate your lips from your face. So I will just blend them in like that. And a lot of times I like to do like this and just get that excess off of the inside and kind of evaluate how it looks. Now, I like this, but if you wanted to do a little bit more lip liner, I probably about 75% of the time go back over after I've put on lipstick or gloss and I do this. Just to get a little bit more definition 
and um, I do not have a very deep or um, pronounced Cupid's bow, but if I ever want it to show up more, I just do like that, and it kind of gives me a little bit more and just take it off of that center. Okay, and this does have a lip brush on it. I'm just not... I remember my mom had one of those little gold lip brushes and she would do that and she would even use the lip brush to put her lipstick on, which I think is, you know, she always wore a little bit darker lipstick anyway. So I think that's probably a good way to do it. I just don't take the time to do that. Okay, and my favorite lip gloss with this combination is good old classic, one of my all time favorites before Buxom Celeste has always been um, Baby Sparks by MAC and they still sell it, thank goodness. And it's very, if you do not like stippy lip, sticky lip gloss, stippy lip gloss, you will not like this. But it does wear down. I don't put too much on and it's worth it. So I usually take a little bit right here, a little bit right here. Don't do it all over your whole lip. And if it looks, like sometimes it'll look like it's just too patchy, I'll do a little bit right there. And that gives you that instant um, pout. You don't want to get too much lip gloss like into your mouth and you don't want too much all over your lips because then it's gonna kind of disintegrate the colors that you've already put there. It's gonna make your um, lip liner kind of melt in too much and it's gonna ruin your dimension. Now, if you are trying to create a different color, which I do that sometimes too, then you might want them to all mix together. But um, I've noticed even with Buxom Celeste, if you put on too much, it will, you know, take, it'll just ruin your dimension. It'll um, blend your colors too much. So I might even take this and blot one time and just keep that little bit of sparkle right there on my lips. So I think that is it. I hope you learned a tip or two. I realize everyone does lip liner and lipstick and things different, but I do think that we learn from each other. And these are just tips that have helped me with uneven lips. And I just think that that technique creates a really pretty rounded lip look instead of more of an arched. And that's just what I happen to prefer. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I am so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for you. YouTube and what it has brought to me in my life. And I'm not talking about money or material things. I'm talking about confidence, friendship, um, just responsibility. Um, I've learned so much about people and other cultures and just so much. I'm so thankful and I couldn't do it without you guys here. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate you and I don't take any of you for granted. So happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.